Welcome to the 2018 ASCRS Residence Committee Boot Camp Series. The following video will take you through the most common forms of operative positioning for colorectal and anal rectal procedures. We will briefly review the most common positioning related nerve injuries in colon and rectal surgery. Then we will review proper positioning and padding for the supine, lithotomy, modified lithotomy, split leg, and prone jackknife positions. The body's own protective mechanism to reposition is lost during general anesthesia. While rare, intraoperative peripheral nerve injury does occur during colorectal procedures. Causes include improper positioning, inadequate protection of susceptible sites, stretch injury, and nerve compression. Prolonged operative time increases the risk of these injuries. Morbidity can range from a self-limiting sensory dysfunction to a disabling sensory motor deficit for the patient. Postoperative neuropathy is defined as anesthesia, paresthesia, hyperesthesia, pain, or motor paresis along a specific nerve distribution and beginning immediately in the postoperative period. The most commonly injured peripheral nerve is the ulnar nerve. Compression of the ulnar nerve in the cubital tunnel at the medial elbow results in numbness of the fourth and fifth digit and loss of intrinsic hand function. Proper padding while tucking the arm and avoidance of excessively tight tucking can minimize risk of this injury. Compression on the spiral groove of the humerus due to improper tucking will lead to radial nerve injury and wrist drop. This injury is uncommon. The brachial plexus is particularly vulnerable to a stretch or compression injury during general anesthesia due to its long course and multiple points of fixation. Avoid excessive abduction greater than 90 degrees. Avoid excessive shoulder extension greater than 30 degrees. Shoulder extension occurs when the armband padding is not equal to the shoulder padding. Avoid the use of shoulder braces, which can cause compression during trendelenburg position. Instead, make use of gel padding, a vacuum beanbag, or the pink pad system. Perineal nerve injury occurs with compression of the nerve overlying the tibial condyle and lithotomy and results in a foot drop. Tibial nerve injury occurs due to compression in the popliteal fossa. Injury to this branch of the sciatic nerve is less common due to ample perineural supportive tissue, but can result in loss of plantar sensation and plantar flexion. Occasionally in a petite patient, the fin stirrups can drive into the popliteal fossa and this should be avoided. Injury to the sciatic nerve can occur when it is overstretched with thigh hyperflexion or through a combination of flexion and maximal external rotation and can manifest in a number of ways. Femoral nerve injury occurs when the nerve is compressed beneath the inguinal ligament during excessive thigh flexion and results in loss of thigh sensation and knee extension. Avoidance of interoperative peripheral nerve injury begins with proper padding and protection and knowledge of these high-risk sites. Selectively tucking the arms and selective use of more complex positioning can also minimize these injuries. If possible, consider a wake lithotomy position prior to sedation or induction of general anesthesia to ensure the patient is comfortably self-positioned in the stirrups. Tucking the arms. When tucking the arms, appropriately pad all pressure points with egg crate foam or other padding. Pad any IV line slide clamps to avoid pressure ulceration and exclude the oximetry monitor from the tuck. The thumbs should be oriented upward. The drape is securely tucked under the patient or under the mattress. Additional padding may be secured around the hands if needed. Ensure all IV lines are running at the completion of the tuck. Supine position. The supine position is the simplest form of operative positioning. It is used for small bowel resection, ileostomy closure, and also right colectomy and total colectomy. Based on the sites of disease, the right, left, or both arms may be tucked. Note that some colorectal surgeons prefer that all their colectomies be placed in modified low lithotomy or split leg position. Most trainees are familiar with this rather straightforward position. Secure the lap belt across the thighs, but be mindful of potential pressure points such as the urinary catheter hub that may be secured in this area. Lithotomy position. Standard lithotomy position is utilized for many anorectal procedures, though some surgeons prefer a prone jackknife. The arms can be either tucked or secured on an arm board. Simple candy cane ankle strap stirrups or blue fin or yellow fin stirrups are utilized. To begin, note the table notches in the operating table. This allows easy placement of the blade clamps used to secure the stirrups. The blade clamps should then be slid to the end of the bed rail. If your stirrups have a round bar instead of a blade, a locking clarket socket clamp can be similarly applied. The stirrup is then slid into the blade clamp and tightened. 
The patient's torso is supine with the buttocks at the end of the OR bed. Hips and knees are flexed and the patient's thighs are abducted and externally rotated. As a general guide, the ankle and knee should be in alignment with the contralateral shoulder. Ensure there is not excessive pressure on the popliteal fossa or on the tibial condyle and that the heel and calf share the weight of the patient's leg. Patient weight capacity for use with most Allen-type fin stirrups is 350 pounds. Modified lithotomy and low lithotomy position. The modified and modified low lithotomy positions employ Allen-type stirrups and are nearly identical to lithotomy, save for the level of hip flexion. Most often, both arms are tucked so as not to restrict bedside movement because both the surgeon and assistant's body are positioned toward the pelvis. Modified lithotomy is used for the perineal portion of an APR. The hips are gently flexed to allow a second surgical team to continue working from the abdominal side while the perineal dissection is initiated. Modified low lithotomy leaves the hips in a relaxed state or with very slight flexion. This position allows the surgeon a full abdominal operative field but leaves access to the anal rectum for passage of a circular stapling vice or for intraoperative endoscopy. It is important to ensure the hips are not hyperextended lower than the table when in this position. The patient's buttocks should be at the edge of the OR table to prevent excessive lordosis of the spine. Split leg position. Split leg position is an alternative to modified low lithotomy. Instead of using Allen type stirrups, the legs are carefully secured on a split leg table. In this way, the surgeon can operate as with supine positioning until the access to the anal rectum is needed. Split leg is accomplished by ensuring the patient's buttocks are at the level of the table edge. The legs are then secured with ACE wraps or other securing straps. The legs are then abducted to allow for perineal access or for an assistant to stand between the legs. Prone jackknife position. Prone jackknife position is utilized when greater exposure to the anal rectum, gluteal cleft, or dorsal sacrum is required. Of note, some surgeons choose to perform their perineal prolapse procedures in nearly all of the anorectal procedures in lithotomy. Prone positioning puts the patient at special risk of nerve injury, pressure ulcer injury, or corneal abrasion. It should not be left unsaid that you should always be personally present during prone positioning. Before positioning, check your setup. Chest stair rolls or for smaller patients, rolled blankets support the patient from the clavicle to the iliac crest and allow for chest expansion. Larger breasts should be maneuvered medially. Tall patients may require a transverse iliac crest roll to fully pad all bony prominences. Male genitalia and any large paniculus should not be under direct pressure. A transfer sheet placed over the chest gel rolls can greatly add in minor adjustments once the patient is prone. If a patient is intubated, allow the anesthesia team to tape the eyes and properly set up their prone view headrest. The patient should then be translocated to the edge of the stretcher. Make a final check to ensure any IVs or monitoring cords will not be disrupted during the flip. A team member then prepares to catch and the patient is log rolled over to the operating table in one fluid motion. The arms are then carefully secured. The knees are padded and a pillow is placed under the shins to keep the toes from touching the bed. A safety strap is placed. The anesthesia team carefully checks that the eyes are visible and the ET tube is still properly positioned. The neck should be neither hyper or hypoextended. The bed is then broken into jackknife positioning to accentuate exposure to the perineal structures. Note that if the break is not clear of the pneumatic column, the bed cannot break. Slide the table forward until the break is clear. Finally, the buttocks are taped. Benzoin or mastazole applied to the buttocks at the level of the gluteal crease will aid in taping. Note the cephalic orientation of the tape to accentuate exposure. This concludes the slide deck on common OR positioning. All patients provided written consent for their photographs to be used in this teaching slide deck.